The first half of 2023 saw strong growth in the EV market, reflecting increasing EV popularity. But now the EV market is declining. In 2022, Tesla's market share decreased from 72% to 65%. By mid-2023, this figure declined even further to 60.5% according to the Kelly Blue Book Electric Vehicle Sales Report. If you remember, Biden said EV will be the norm in the near future. Biden is practically asking the middle class to purchase EV. The EV market is now such that auto dealers from 4,000 have sent an angry letter to Biden and begging Biden to stop imposing EV. But why do politicians are trying to force EV on the average citizen? If you believe that the government wants EV to become more affordable, we're about to reveal an unspoken truth that will surprise you. Here's what occurred. It all started with Biden insisting on a tough stance towards EV makers. Let's talk about the massive effort to make electric vehicles more popular. You may have heard that the Biden administration plans to require electric vehicles to make up two-thirds of motor vehicle sales by 2032, a more than tenfold increase in EV market share. This would eliminate many existing auto manufacturing jobs. Electric vehicles require fewer parts and less labor to produce than gas-powered vehicles. But here's the problem. The actual sales of EV aren't exactly on the upswing. We're talking about just 4 to 7% of the car market, based on the time of year. Consider Biden as a coach of a sports team, but instead of athletes, he has car manufacturers. Rather than just giving pep talks, he's laying down some serious ground rules. Car makers were forced to ramp up their EV game, big time as a result of the Biden administration's tough emissions regulations. We're talking about changing the entire automotive industry, a total overhaul from gas-guzzling vehicles to sleek electric cars. Now, the EPA is the culprit in this story by introducing regulations that were so strict that it's as if they were shooting at the moon. The major players in the automotive industry, such as Ford and Stellantis, are concerned about the financial consequences they could face under the new rules. Ford claims it could be paying $1 billion in penalties. That's quite a sum of money, which could have been put to use to fund other things, like the transition to EV. Who pays the price? Of course, the average person. As if that wasn't enough, they've artificially increased the cost of EV and specifically ordered several businesses to offer EV or shut down. More on that later. Biden would like that by 2032, as high as 67% of all new vehicles sold must be electric in order for car makers to remain in business. This is a huge leap from current levels of 4 to 7%. EPA Administrator Michael Rion was all about this change. He claimed that these standards will reduce by a staggering 3.7 billion tons of carbon dioxide. This is equivalent to taking all of the U.S. transportation sector's emissions for four years and eliminating them. He said he would work closely with all stakeholders, including labor unions, as well as the auto industry green groups and others, to bring this new modern day of clean cars to the forefront. You may be thinking how the public reacts to this. The answer is that it completely backfired. A few people were completely enthusiastic and saw this as a huge environmental win. Some were skeptical, concerned about the price and whether the shift could be accomplished within the time frame. However, that the automotive industry was already making progress towards electric cars. Big companies such as Ford and GM were investing billions of dollars into electric vehicles. Ford was planning to build 600,000 EV each year by 2024. GM was aiming for 1 million vehicles annually by 2025. These numbers were massive. However, there was a gap in the market and not everyone was making the same rate and some firms were not aiming to have two-thirds of their vehicles electric in 2032. That's when the tension began to increase. Here's a different twist. Selling electric vehicles right now isn't making a profit for anyone, at least aside from Tesla. Other brands are losing money for every EV they offer. Dealers are saying, if the majority of our sales turn out to be EV, then we're likely to be in serious trouble. But it's true that if you're seeking an electric vehicle, 
it could be the perfect time to buy. Dealers are having a hard time selling EV such as the Ford Machi e which means you could get it at an affordable price. The Biden administration is also experiencing many criticisms regarding its proposed fuel efficiency standards. They're achieving a 62,939 mark and are questioning the feasibility of a fast transition to electric vehicles. This is turning out to be a contest between the government against the common man, and it's going to be fascinating to see who prevails. The new rules could mean an increase in the cost of making vehicles that cost around $633 more than the average vehicle in 2027 and approximately $1,200 more by 2032. However, the EPA said that drivers could save money in the end because EV are more efficient to run and there are tax credits that could be available for car buyers to aid in easing the blow. The main issue that everyone was thinking about was, were these regulations actually feasible? The EPA claimed that they were, while pointing out improvements in technology and support from the government for EV. However, automakers have brought out the huge challenges ahead. We're not talking about just producing more electric cars, but also constructing the infrastructure for them such as charging stations with enough capacity and mining the right materials for the batteries. Now imagine you're a car dealer. You've been able to keep these EV in your garage because they're not being purchased in the amount you'd like. But you've already financed these vehicles and now you're stuck in the cars. This isn't a good situation, is it? This is exactly what's happening to many dealers in the market. Nearly 4,000 of them sent a letter to Biden President Biden asking to halt the EV push. They would like things to develop naturally without pushing it too excessively. Car companies such as GM and Ford have invested billions in creating electric vehicles. However, now that the cars are finally on the road and are actually costing them cash on them. Ford, for instance, reports that it is losing $36,000 for each electric vehicle sold. This is a huge loss. It's not just Ford GM is in the same situation. They've been forced to reduce their plans, such as cutting battery production by 40%. They've even stopped production of their top-selling EV pickup, the F-150 Lightning, and cut their EV sales targets by 40%. Let's discuss where the EV batteries originate from. Many of the materials needed for these batteries, such as cobalt and lithium, are located in China. China was by far the largest EV market, with 55% of global EV sales in 2023, a total of 3.4 million units. China is also the largest battery producer. Therefore, the dependence on China for crucial components and batteries places the U.S. in a bind due to the complicated relationship between China and the U.S. EV are still expensive when compared to gasoline-powered cars. For example, Starting price of Ford F-150 Lightning is $49,995, and the starting price for Ford F-150 XL is $33,835. The electric version is priced at $16,160 more than a gas model. This is a significant amount of change, and even with rebates and discounts, EV are still out of the reach of most people. The way that car makers have taken on EVs is fascinating. They're not creating these cars for the typical buyer instead. They're focused on high-end performance and high-tech features. That's fine for sure, but it also means that these cars are expensive. It's as if they're making EV for a particular market and not for all. Thus, EV sales aren't performing well. They're sitting longer on the dealer lot than gas vehicles, and given the constant pressure of Biden's administration and car manufacturers to market these EV dealers aren't satisfied customers. Their cash is sucked up in these unsold vehicles and the car manufacturers themselves are losing profit on every EV sold. U.S. is struggling to keep up with China in the field of EV technology. Dealers are right to request Biden to slow down electrification. Promoting EV can make China stronger while making the U.S. weaker in particular because China has the majority of the resources required to support EV production. Electric vehicles are expensive, and that's a major issue. The technology is new and expensive, 
and even though consumers pay more for them, car makers are still losing money. The majority of people aren't to EV at the moment, aside of early adopters in wealthy households. The average American does not see the value of buying an electric vehicle. They're expensive and difficult to handle, and there are infrastructure issues. Many people are conscious of the benefits for the environment, but they don't want to carry the burden of the EV transition all on their own. So here's the lesson. The drive toward EV must be an equilibration approach. We need to take into consideration the demand of consumers, technological capabilities, as well as economic implications. When purchasing an EV is a good idea to the typical person and the middle class won't be able to embrace them. It's that simple. It's not just about purchasing an environmentally friendly car, but also making sure that it's feasible and affordable for everyone. Thank you for watching. Tell me about the future of electric vehicles or EV in America in a comment below.